When it comes to database management and SQL, it's nearly impossible not to talk about normalization. Being one of the most important topics related to the database in general, we will discuss what normalization is in today's session. But before we move on to the session, please make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and enabling that bell icon so that you will never miss any updates from IntelliFact. So without any further ado, let's get to today's agenda. First comes why normalization. And then comes the various anomalies. After that comes the normal forms. And then comes how does normalization help the databases. And then comes the advantages of normalization. And finally comes the various drawbacks of normalization. So without any more wait, let's get to our first topic. Why normalization? Normalization is one of the most commonly used methods when it comes to structured query language. Large amounts of data are saved in databases. If the data is not arranged properly, retrieving specific data will be a laborious effort. We can organize this data and eliminate unnecessary data with the use of normalization. This session will provide you a thorough understanding of the SQL normalization. Now comes the main question, what actually is normalization? So let's get into that. It is the procedure for minimizing data redundancy in the table and enhancing integrity. Why then is this necessary? Without normalization in SQL, we could run into a lot of problems. Which brings us to our next topic, various anomalies. Here are the three main anomalies that is observed when it comes to SQL. The insertion anomaly. This is when we are unable to insert data into the table with another attribute being present. Up comes the updation anomaly. When numerous rows of data must be updated in order to update a single data value, this is known as an update anomaly. And finally, the deletion anomaly. This term deletion anomaly describes a circumstance in which some vital data is unintentionally lost when some other data is deleted. Normalization is more effective because it is typically breaking down a table into smaller ones. Edgar F. Codd established the first normal form in 1970 and later further normal forms were defined. In between, the issue of what SQL has to do with normalization comes up. Well, the language used to communicate with database is called as SQL. The data that is currently in database must be in normalized form in order to start any interaction. Otherwise, it leads to abnormalities which prevents us from forwarding. The distribution of data will be improved through the normalization in the SQL. Let's now use examples to better grasp each and every normal form. Let's see our next topic which is normal forms. Initially comes the 1NF. The 1NF. This normal form addresses the atomicity issue. Atomicity here denotes that the value in the table shouldn't be subdivided further. Simply said, one cell cannot contain more than one value. A table breaks the first normal form if it has a composite or multi-valued attribute. If we were to take an example of a college student who has enrolled for multiple courses, then in any table where the courses are correspondent to that student, they should be in a different column or separate atomic tables linked to that same student. And then comes the second type of normal form which is called as 2NF. The table must be in the first NF in order to meet the first requirement in the second NF. Additionally, the table shouldn't have any partial dependencies. Here, partial dependency refers to the situation where a norm trime property is determined by the right subset of a candidate key. Let's understand this by taking a real-world scenario as a case study. Consider two owners of a company A and B and also C as a client. If a new business between the company and the client can be considered as a determining property from the company to the client, then the scenario is in 2NF. If and only if both A and B together are forming businesses with C and not A nor B individually without their partner. After that comes the next type of form which is called as 3NF. The previous rule still holds true. The table must be in 2NF before moving on to 3NF. The absence of transitive reliance for non-prime properties is the second requirement. Accordingly, therefore, a transitive dependency is functional dependency in which X determines Z indirectly as a result of X determines Y, where it is not true that Y determines X. The last type of form is called as the BCNF or the Boy's Chord Normal Form. This also goes by the name 3.5NF. 
It was created by Raymond F. Boys and Edgar F. Cord as a more advanced version of 3NF to address specific anomalies that 3NF did not cover. The table needs to satisfy the third normal form before moving on to BCNF. Every functional dependency A, B in BCNF that are requires that A serve as a table superior key. Now let's go on to our next topic in line. How does normalization helps databases? A database must be normalized to reduce duplication, which is more technically termed as redundancy and ensure that only relevant data is kept in each table. Additionally, it stops any problems brought on to be insertions, deletions and updates to the databases. Data distribution is improved through the normalization in SQL. The database's data needs to be standardized before interaction can start. If not, we must stop because it will result in an exception. Additionally, normalization can make it simpler to construct the database so that it has the ideal atomic element structure. Let's check our next topic, advantages of normalization. The database structure is more comprehensible and straightforward. Existing data can be added to the database without having an impact. The results in the smaller database, by normalizing, we may reduce the null values. Data duplication or database redundancy can be eliminated by employing normalization. Minimized or avoided issues with data modification. Finally, the tiny table and the ability to fit rows onto the data page provide for faster finding, sorting, and indexing. Now, coming to the conclusion of this session, our next topic is drawbacks of normalization. The work becomes more difficult as the necessity to join such tables grows. The lookup table must constantly be used, hence the system will operate more slowly. Without knowing what the customers want, it is challenging to model the database. Need in-depth analysis and design because the purpose of the database, such as whether it should be optimized for reading data, writing data, or both, also affects how it is normalized, making it a complex and challenging process for the analysts. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and enabling that bell icon so that you will never miss any updates from IntelliPad. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.